So today I'm going to walk through an example deployment using Rivery's environment feature. So what you see here is the Rivery console uh, with uh, a few rivers um, that I've created as examples. Um, so right now in this account, we have four different rivers. So one from YouTube, HubSpot, and SQL Server, as well as a logic river uh, to orchestrate uh, these these jobs and you know do some logic um, downstream in Snowflake. So this is a, a pretty simple use case where we are you know calling our data ingestion pools to run first, and then um, with some of the data we get, uh, combining some of our our sales tables together, for example. Um, so the use case I'm going to walk through is you know, building out the environment feature in the Shivery account, as well as uh, building my first deployment package to migrate these Rivery objects from one environment to another. So right now, all that's in this account are my, my four rivers, as well as the connections used to create these rivers. So I have my three source connections, which are SQL, HubSpot, and YouTube, as well as Snowflake, which I'm using as my target. I also have um, a variable that I'm using called DB. So right now this is set to dev. And this is the default database that I'm using uh, for all of these rivers. So for example, you know, in my in my YouTube river, uh, my target I have set to this DB variable and same with all my other rivers, as well as uh, in my logic process, I have I'm calling this this database value um, as well in my query and in my uh, final table. Um, and this will be important uh, when we go through, you know, best practices in, in migrating, you know, from, from one environment to another. So the first thing I'm gonna do is head to my environments uh, menu. So if I'm an admin user, I can see this menu. Um, and you'll see right now, you know, I don't have any deployment packages yet and there's no deployment activity. And when I go to my environments manager, I see my default environment that you know that comes with uh, my account. So, what I want to do in this scenario is set up, um, you know, a development or sandbox area, uh, as well as a production environment. And the use case will be I want to deploy a package from development to production. So the first thing I'm going to do is is change the name of this existing environment, and this can just be um, what I call development. We'll change the name there and you'll see it's reflected up here um, and then I can add a new environment and this one I'll call production and save that so now I can see my two environments it's also reflected in the drop down menu of you know what what entities I want to see so now when I go to production and I go to any of my you know, rivers or connections, this is blank because this is a brand new, you know, empty environment that I've created. So what I want to do is create a package that will move my rivers uh, from dev into production. But I want to make sure that when I move these rivers, I am sending data to the right uh, target database. So right now, everything is going to my dev database in Snowflake. I want to have all of my rivers outputting to my prod database in Snowflake um, when I do this migration. So now we'll go back to the environment menu where we can create our first deployment package. So I'll go ahead and click Add Deployment Package and name my package. And first, I need to choose a source environment, a target environment. So in this case, my source environment is development, and my target is production, because development is where all of my rivery objects currently are, and production is where I want to deploy or move them to. Um, so once I have these selected, I then get the objects to deploy populated. So I can click into rivers, and I'll see you know all the rivers that are possible for me to uh, pick and choose as part of this deployment package. In this case, I want to deploy all of these rivers, so I'll click them all. You can also see uh, if the river already exists in your target. So 
So if I had already done a prior deployment and let's say this logic river already existed, I would see that river name here where none of these exist yet because we just created our production environment. So I see um, you know, new to production. So I'll just go through and select everything that I want to be a part of this package. So all of my connections, I also want to uh, move to production and I wanna make sure my DB variable uh, as well. Uh, so now I'll go back to general and the next thing I want to do is just review all of the package settings because these are really what dictate the behavior of a deployment package. For example, uh, if I'm deploying logic rivers uh, and I also want the, uh, the rivers inside of those logic rivers that are, you know, being called to run to also be a part of this package and to be deployed to production, then I want to make sure that, you know, added ad related rivers is enabled. Same with related connections or related river groups. And you know, each of these river entities have you know, their own settings. So in this case, I actually want to add connection with credentials to the deployment because since it's my first deployment, I wanna make sure that I also deploy the credentials that make up a connection. Because for some of my connections, I'm gonna use the same source connection for, uh, for both dev and prod. Um, so I wanna, Make sure I bring those connections too, so I don't have to re, um, reconfigure them. So now let's say I'm ready to deploy, and I go ahead and click deploy. What I'm seeing now is a pop-up that River is generating based on the settings that I've selected, and also the objects that I've selected. There are some related elements that we're also planning to deploy. So basically. Rivery is just doing some calculations in the back end to say, based on your settings, we also found two river groups that you didn't select originally, but are related to objects that you are deploying. So do you also want to deploy these two river groups? So if I did not, I could uncheck this. Um, but for this case, I'll, I'll also deploy these. So I'll leave this checked and go ahead and click deploy. So now my package is deploying and it just succeeded. Um, so what I can do now is I can go back and you know view the uh, settings of the package, or if I wanted to revert my target environment back to its prior state, I could click revert to revert all these changes. Um, but in this case, just to check you know and see how everything went, I can go into production. I can go ahead and look at my rivers. So I now see these four rivers in production. Um, same with their connections. Um, and the DB variable. So really all for my use case that's needed to be changed here is I want this DB variable in production to actually be called prod. So I'm gonna update this here. Um, so when I change this, it only changes it in production. So in dev, my DB variable still has the value that is dev. So because I pre-configured all of these rivers to have target databases that utilize this DB variable, for example, right here, as well as in my logic, um, then starting to run these processes against production uh, is, is super seamless because they already are all pointing to, to the correct place. So now that I have all of my rivers that I wanted to deploy to production, deploy to production as well as their connections and any other related variables, uh, I now have these two functioning workspaces, right, that I can make changes in and deploy things back and forth. Um, and what I can also do is permission these areas um, to, to my various users. So another option is, you know, within, if I'm an admin within my users tab, when I go to add a user or edit an existing user, I can choose what access or role they play in each uh, environment. So for example, if I wanted to add a new user and I only wanted them to be, you know, a developer my development, but um, you know, not have access to prod at all. I could I could have these settings at my environment level. Uh, what this what this feature really entails in in totality is is first the the multi tenancy uh, capability. So being able to have different workspaces in a Rivery account where you can permission uh, at the user and role level who can do what, who can see what, um, and, and manage that as as an admin, and then. Um, on top of that, the ability to move content uh, from, from one area to another uh, in a super seamless and, and user-friendly way. So this was a 
a very quick demo of you know a, a simple use case, but um, showing the uh, the the robust you know capability of of this delivery environment feature. So so thanks for watching.